bring to you the show that celebrates the dark art of the tall tale. On David Mitchell's team tonight, he's spied on more birds than a teenage Russell Brand. It's the comedian, naturalist and TV presenter Bill Oddie. <laughs> and one of the country's best-loved comedians who's also had a number one hit in the charts. Finally, someone I can relate to. It's Frank Skinner! <laughs> And joining Lee Mack tonight, a comedian who used to have a job in a call centre. She says it wasn't that bad, but the daily 17-hour commute to Mumbai was knackering. <laughs> Sarah Millican! <laughs> and a comedian who trained as a chef but had to give it up when he realised he wasn't a rude, cantankerous arse. <laughs> John Richardson! So we start with uh, round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the lies. And Sarah Millican is first tonight. Sarah. OK. I once wet myself in a car and then blamed it on my friend's dog. <laughs> <laughs> David. Right. Um, I mean, it's... I'm willing to believe it, I'll <laughs> say that at this point. Why did you wet yourself in a car? Cos I needed a wee in a car. <laughs> I've needed a wee in a car, but I've never weed in a car. I was once stuck in a very long a line of traffic trying to get onto the Seven Bridge on the M4, and I let myself go in a one-litre bottle of Volvic. <laughs> I did that on the motorway, and my problem was I was really desperate, and I had a bottle of water, and I had to drink the water. <laughs> <laughs> my body was saying, no, no more water. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a terrible cyclical thing. No yeah. sooner than I got it down, it was out again. <laughs> I didn't want to draw attention to myself, because <laughs> people might pull up either side, and I'd clearly, by my facial expression, be urinating at that point. <laughs> oh, please show us that face. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this is obviously just for everyone but me, a commonplace occurrence. Yes. I don't, you know, basically, lavatories are just for me. <laughs> what a great what? name for your autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who did you blame the dog to, if you see what I mean? Uh, to the mechanic uh, when I took it in for a valet. <laughs> so whose car was it? My car. Your car. You peed in the car. Yep. Uh, were you in a... Is there a good reason for that? Were you in a traffic jam after a large bottle of Evian? Oh, it's, uh, well, just tap water, probably. Um... Right. <laughs> I've never been in a car with a tap, so, you know... <laughs> <laughs> it's a very posh car. All right. Um, yeah, I was stuck it's in it. It's so posh, it's plumbed in. <laughs> it's literally got gangs of people following it with pipes. Well, to be fair, if it was plumbed in, I'd have probably had a toilet in there as well, wouldn't yes. I? <laughs> I've never done this, but is it conceivable... Cos as a woman, you don't really have much control over where it's going. But as a man, is it conceivable you could aim it out of the window? <laughs> you could, you could, but the speed you were going at would mean it all came straight yeah. back in you. <laughs> so, when you got to this mechanic, what did you... Uh, what did you say? I mean, was the stain so clearly visible? No, it had sunk right in. Was he a bit confused that the dog was driving? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it wasn't on the driver's seat. You change seats oh. well, you? <laughs> That is dangerous. <laughs> you change seat in a traffic jam where you're in control of the vehicle. Yes. You can't buy class, can you? <laughs> <laughs> if I looked in a rear-view mirror, I'd think that passenger looks very, very content considering there's no-one driving. <laughs> <laughs> thinking, David? What do you think, Mary? I just think Sarah is the kind of strong, independent woman who would <laughs> step out of her car, stride to the hard <laughs> shoulder, <laughs> and say, just go... <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then do it. Yeah. Bill, do you believe it? <laughs> yes, I right. think it happened. Well, you think it's true and you think it's a lie. So I have to decide, yes. which I hate. No, um, I think... I think it's true. I you think it's it. true? So, yeah. OK. So, in that case, Sarah, truth or lie? It is, uh, true. <laughs> 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 
Oh, God, I'm David. Well, you listen to that in the future. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> stuck in traffic for two and a half hours I was in absolute agony and thought it was the only way out and it was either that or rupture something so I just moved across stripped <laughs> weed moved across pulled back up champion <laughs> Well, there we are. And uh, if you've been affected by any of the issues raised on the show, <laughs> uh, Frank. OK. I was once driven to A&E in an ice cream van. In place of a siren, the driver turned on the musical chimes. <laughs> what happened to you that involved having to go to A&E? Well, I was, um, I was playing um, rounders and <laughs> I ran in between bases and I sort of went over on my ankle. And it was in Cornwall. Your ankle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how far out of place it went. Blimey! <laughs> so I was in, I mean, real proper agony, like... Honestly, I thought I was going to black out, it hurt so much. And um, somebody found an ambulance and it probably was about 25 minutes um, and still no sign. This bloke came over from the ice cream van and um, he said, I'll, I'll take you to the hospital. So they're trying to dial the emergency service. Perhaps instead of dialing no, 999, dial press they... 99. <laughs> <laughs> it's easily done. <laughs> So you've gone over on your ankle, yeah. and the ice cream man has seen you from a distance, hasn't well, we it? didn't have a car. We all got the train down, so no one had a car with them. Right. So this bloke said, I'll give you... And I was just... The idea of getting to somewhere where they could just give me a painkilling injection would have been lovely. And presumably you didn't get the siren going straight away? No, it, it wasn't the siren. It was, it was green sleeves. Well, green sleeves. But... <laughs> Did you, like, give him some money for a lost trade? Oh, no. <laughs> When you've been a celebrity a bit longer, you'll realise that money's no longer relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Where back in Cornwall were you? I was in Truro. I don't understand why you would put the siren on. I he, think he, I said... I did mention to him that I liked um, music from the Tudor period. <laughs> I also don't understand why you were in Truro, because if you didn't drive, you would have got the fast service to Penzance. <laughs> well, the holiday was a combination of rail travel and taxis and a little bit of ice cream. Great bad. <laughs> so, time for a decision. What do we think? So, I'm not happy I... with it. You're not happy with it? Not happy with it. You're not having it? Oh, I think it's true. I don't want to become Trevor Travel Planner, but if... <laughs> I mean, a rounders kit is something you throw in the boot of a car. You don't take it on a train. OK, so you're saying it's true. I think it's true. John thinks it's a lie. Yeah. We'll say it's a lie, then. You're going to say it's a lie? OK, Frank, truth or lie? It is a lie. Yes, it's a lie. Frank wasn't driven to A&E in an ice cream van. In fact, accidents involving ice cream vans are incredibly rare, yet always result in the tragic loss of hundreds and thousands. <laughs> Bill, you're next. Right, OK. I was saved from drowning by a character from the children's show Rainbow. Uh... Wow. <laughs> Surprisingly buoyant, you six-foot felt-covered man. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, we don't know, we don't know he's no, felt-covered. No. There was unfelt-covered men as well. People. Jeffrey. Human beings, I think. Jeffrey. Got... Well, yeah. let's not give him any names. Um, don't help him. Oh. Which character? If he says Jeffrey, I'll kill you. <laughs> Freddy. Well, there was a Freddy. There was a Rod, Jane and Freddy. Rod, Jane and Freddy, so... yeah. Yeah, that's... he was the sexier of them. Um... <laughs> I was like the pink hippo. <laughs> Only one that... arm, though. What? Yeah, George and Zippy had one arm each. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they did. The other arm was in the mouth, wasn't it? What are you saying? <laughs> 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 you say a lot of disgusting things on this show, but now you've gone too far. <laughs> so, Freddie has saved you from a... Uh, from a, what was that, a pond? From drowning. Didn't get the pond. It was it in the sea. It was the ocean. The ocean, OK. Which it's ocean the... was it? It was the Indian Ocean. Did you get the train there? I would like to.
Now, the question I want to know is, is Fred from Rod, Jane and Freddy, is he on holiday with you, or is this an unbelievable coincidence? It is actually an unbelievable coincidence. Did he, he recognise you? Yes, he did. He yeah. you already? No, he did know me. I didn't... I uh, hadn't met or anything like no, that. No, but he was aware. He was aware. But he was aware that there was somebody in the sea, some way offshore, waving as if to say, I am drowning. Probably, I'm drowning. He probably thought you were doing the Funky Gibbon, didn't he? <laughs> Might have been pre Funky Gibbon. What wow. year was it? Wow. <laughs> Surely human beings still lived in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're in the sea, yes. and then Rod, Jane, and Freddie. Oh, just yeah. Freddie. Is he with Rod and Jane, by the way? And he was with Jane. Well, Jane Fred... and Freddie were, were a couple, weren't they? Fred. I think they still are a couple. Did Rod must have felt left out? He was giving it to Zippy. <laughs> <laughs> Did he cup you in the traditional... <laughs> no, he didn't cup me. <laughs> I don't mean... Oh, no. Pretty... <laughs> yes. Well, I'm not suggesting he'd arrive before I save you. <laughs> <laughs> so I got pulled in backwards, yes, on my back. On to the right? shore. Yes, back to the shore, and it was well, about... Well, how's he going to be back to the shore? He's not going to take him further out. <laughs> he might have been intercepted by a lifeboat. <laughs> He has been <laughs> three series. <laughs> Don't come onto this show and soil the seats. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> so, Bill, he gets you back yes. to the shore. Was yes. that the end of it? We then exchanged pleasantries and said, you know, are you, what the hell are you doing here? They were on holiday, we were on holiday. Total coincidence. My query would be this. And it's not train related. <laughs> if no one else yeah. but Freddy was around, how did you not know you were on holiday with Freddy? It was a very small island. I'll name drop it now. In the Seychelles. Ooh, bit of class. Will <laughs> 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 very... we all get free holidays in the Seychelles now? Nope, said that. Well, I will. <laughs> and... I also think the Seychelles sound nice. <laughs> <It's about laughs> Has adored the island of Mauritius. <laughs> if there's anybody well, watching it. from Alton Towers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lee, time for your decision. What is your laser like mind telling you? I, Me. It's a lie. Do you? Yeah, I think it's what? a lie because I don't remember any episodes of Rainbow that had Freddy swimming in them, so I'm not sure he could. <laughs> I think it's true, but I just have this really sad image Listen, of I've lots of other a... people watching you drown. <laughs> lots of oh, bloody get him then. <laughs> OK, John says it's true, Sarah says it's a lie. I, I'm going to say it's true. OK. Very well, the answer is... It's true! No way! Yes, it's true. A bill was saved from drowning by Freddie from Rainbow. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Cathy. <laughs> Welcome, Cathy. So, uh, John, what is Cathy to you? Uh, this is Cathy, and we crashed into each other while we were both on our driving test. Uh, Sarah, how do you know Cathy? Uh, this is my friend Cathy. We fooled the newspapers into reporting that she'd be left under the spell of a hypnotist at a hen party. And uh, Lee, what about you? This is Cathy. She's the hotel receptionist that I had to phone from my room when I found a peacock in my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> So there we have it. John's pranged motorist, Sarah's newspaper prankster, or Lee's peacock remover. David, where would you like to start? Uh, John, your... Hi. Uh, your driving test, you, wh wh how did the crash happen? What manoeuvre were you uh, attempting? Uh, I was pulling out of a junction onto a carriageway, but then I saw a car, so I stopped, and she drove into the back of me. Basically, two driving tests in convoy, as it yeah. were. Yeah, well, you, you, do the, you do the same route from the same... Driving school, didn't you? When you go to get your exam. Did you file your test, John? Uh, we both had to have our tests annulled because of the accident. Annulled? <laughs> Does that, that usually involves the Pope, doesn't it? 
<laughs> when, when was this, John? I, I, I just had to renew my licence, so 11 years ago. 11 years ago, OK. Kathy hasn't changed the number in 11 years. She described it as weird, what had happened, and I remember thinking it wasn't weird. You hit me. <laughs> So she said we should keep numbers, jokingly, and said, so that we don't get our test on the same day next time. Lol. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did people say lol 11 years ago? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just coming in then. Right. <laughs> Before we even knew you could write it down. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, why, why did you, um... What's the story here? What? <laughs> a disinterested policeman. <laughs> I think you mean uninterested policeman. All good policemen are disinterested. Yes, good point. <laughs> Not an amusing point. <laughs> but grammatically an absolute belter. Yeah. Yeah. What's, the difference? What's, the difference? What's the difference between disinterested? What does disinterested mean? Disinterested means though? impartial. Uninterested means bored. Oh, I don't know which one the audience yeah. is. <laughs> Um, so, Sarah, <laughs> you fooled the newspapers about a hypnotist at a hen party. Fooled the newspapers into reporting that she had fallen under a spell uh, put under by the hypnotist at the hen party. And what, what was the nature of the spell? What did Cathy think she was? Uh, every now and again, she would just burst into song as Madonna. So how, how did you then fool the paper? You, you, you just yeah. phoned them up? Just phoned them up and told them and... They printed it. <laughs> uh, they came out and did a photo shoot, the local paper. Did it end up in any national papers? Yeah, it ended up in most of the national papers. Seriously? Um, most? Yep. Was Cathy photographed? Was she in the paper looking Madonna-esque? Uh, yes, she was. David, okay. are you satisfied with your witness? Would you like to move on? Uh, so yeah, what about, what about Lee? Lee? You, were, you, had, you found a peacock in your hotel bed. <laughs> uh, yes, I found a peacock in my hotel room. Yeah. Did they have ornamental grounds? They, they had some sort of ornamental grounds to a degree. I don't, I don't, they definitely had peacocks. Did you hear the peacock? Uh, I, I woke up in the morning, it was ground floor, and, uh, uh, you know, like most blokes who sleep on their own hotels, it can get a bit whiffy, all right? So I opened the French doors that were in, oh, in the room. Oh, you opened the, the French, French doors. Door. So I go into the swimming pool, which is very near my room. I come back with the dressing gown on. I walk in, and there's a peacock in my did, room. Yeah, did he do the thing with his tail? He saw me, and he sort of went like that, and I think his tail went up a little bit, and then he sort of ran around a bit, and then he sort of got a bit flustered, and I tried to waft him out the door. Yeah. I was a bit panicking, cos... I know a peacock doesn't sound very threatening, but it's one of those things that, in your room, suddenly becomes terrifying. So, now you've, you've, you've tried to waft the peacock out, and then you, you ring reception, yeah. Kathy answers. Yes. What, what, what do you say? I said, there's, uh, this is a bit weird, but there's a peacock in my room. And she said, oh, yeah. They do that a lot, believe it or not. Right. And she came round. She sort of just uh, literally sort of was more assertive than me. She wafted it with a bit more she, gumption. Can you stop saying waft? It was a bit more masculine than that. <laughs> I, I said waft once and you haven't let it go, have you? <laughs> she used the pillow, made she a few noises... She did the pillow to... Uh, and to the, the peacock went the pe out. went out. The peacock went out and then uh, shut the... She even shut the doors for me. I was like, I could have done that. It was just a, it was a takeover bid by the peacocks to distract Cathy. When she got back to reception, 50 peacocks yeah. there. <laughs> this is our hotel now. <laughs> I just think... <laughs> I just think a receptionist would phone someone else, another member of staff, to deal it with. It wasn't a big five-star hotel. It was a sort of... You know, I don't know what star it was, but it was a sort of... It, it was more casual, the hotel, than you're imagining. No, no. Peacocks are in very posh places and very formal places. V very rural places, generally. No, not... No, it's not like... You don't, you don't farm peacocks. Yes, you do. <laughs> People do farm peacocks. Well, no, but... Well, OK, yes. <laughs> the English countryside is covered in massive no, no. flocks of peacocks. No, but they do farm peacocks. Peacock. peacock milk they... we endlessly drink. <laughs> hippie-ish than those hotels with peacocks <laughs> milling around. <laughs> in and out of the rooms and the occasional panicky comedian won't join in, won't pal up with a say peacock. Waft, say it, go on, I don't know what to say. Tries to waft, waft the it out. <laughs> and the only, the only member of staff in the hotel has to come and make noises with the pillow. Do you know what? apologise to the peacock later and say, we won't let him stay here again. He's all stuck up. <laughs> 
So, uh, we need an answer. David's team is Kathy, John's unfortunate learner driver, Sarah's hypnotized hoaxer, or Lee's receptionist to the rescue. Well, you see, if we take Kathy, though, as the core of this whole thing, yes. I think Kathy looks too alternative and cool to work in a small, anonymous hotel. Do you know what I'd say to that, Frank? Have you ever noticed sometimes you're talking to the receptionist at a hotel yeah. and they seem one thing, and you see them in the local pub later that night, mm. and they can be quite punky. <laughs> Decision time. What are you going to say? Um, Bill, what do you think? I, I would think that it could be the peacock rescue. I can see her doing all the moves for Madonna. I can see her with three muscular black men behind her doing a synchronised dance. <laughs> <laughs> so can she, by the look of it. <laughs> I think, I think it's Sarah's. I think it's a local paper scam. The local, that's what you're yeah. going for? Yeah. OK. Cathy, would you please reveal your true identity? Hi, I'm Cathy, and together, Sarah and I filled the local papers with our fake hypnotism story. <laughs> It was in the National Press, it went in the Star and the Express, but it was biggest news on the Shields Gazette, where it was front-page news. There it is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cathy. <laughs> <laughs> which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth but against the clock. First off is... <coughs> it's Lee. When I'm at home, I amuse myself by shaving only half my face and doing that thing where you have a conversation between two people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, what are the characters of the, of the shaved Lee, unshaven Lee? I'll often do a sailor, because that suits the look of the longer beard. Could, you, could we Sa have a little bit of sailor? I'm, I'm weird. Looks like you've shaved half your beard off again. <laughs> Hang on, that doesn't make sense, cos it doesn't. It looks like no. he's got the complete beard. No, no, beard. no, 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 no. He has got the beard and he's talking to the so man to the other person, yes. Looks like you've shaved off your beard off again. Yeah, but the other yeah. person the looks like he's... The little boy looks up and goes, I couldn't help it, I had to, cos I was feeling a bit hairy. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't make any sense, because the other one looks like he's completely shaved his beard. Is no, it... no, 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 sorry. I've shaved half the beard. Yes, yeah. yes, I know. The one with the beard is the sailor with the beard. Going, looks yeah. like you've shaved off your... Meaning look him. half your beard off. The other to the other one. Yeah. Who <laughs> said, sort of going, yes, I did. Yes, I did, you shaved half it off. But it doesn't look like they've shaved <laughs> half it off. It just looks... They've shaved it, it all off. Like they've shaved it all off. I have you say that. You no, you're wrong. No, 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 I've shaved it all off. wrong, David. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I'll do it again. Right, man with half a beard. Yeah. You look like you've shaved... No, no, no. Yes, I had to, but you should see the other side. Look, it's still there. <laughs> and then the other fellow goes, I'm just as bad as you. Look. Clean <laughs> shaving. <laughs> you're watching. If you let the story finish, you know I'm using it up. Why did you say <laughs> half in the first remark? He did you say, look how you shave your beard off again? Should we shave your whole beard off again? And he's going, yes, I know, but then they'll let me show you more fully. <laughs> like you did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't <laughs> say it like a red boy. Coincidence, because I too am a cock. Just laugh and clap. <laughs> <laughs> right, David, time for a decision. Well, I think we think it's a lie, don't we? I think so, yes. Yeah, yeah. definitely a lie. Saying it's a lie. OK. Yeah. Lee, is it the truth or were you telling a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. Lee does amuse himself by shaving only half of his face and pretending to have a conversation <laughs> between two people. Uh, John. Possession. Right, there's a box under your desk. John, would you put, bring the box up, please? This is the emergency kit that I keep in my car at all times. OK. Well, not you... at all times, obviously. It's here. <laughs> Lie! <laughs> <laughs> Next! 
John, will you take it out of the box and put it on the desk there? What would have been brilliant then if he had took his car out of that? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Can we investigate it? Yes. Do you want to yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd quite like to. Like I'll, I'll be very careful well. with it. Are you going to bring it back? Well, yeah. 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 I'll be careful. There we go. Thank you. Oh, I've never given another man my box before. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I have. It's quite um, nice. <laughs> there's a, a mug, spotted mug. Yeah, well spotted. Yes, here's, here's options, Belgian chocolate. Okay. Bill, sorry, can you be careful with that? That's his mother's ashes. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, chocolatey ashes. And here, a little... Little bottle of some red wine. Can some I just say wine. this is like the b most boring version of the generation? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best ready steady cook ever. <laughs> it's a sort of a post nuclear deal or no deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, right. Okay. So take us through why you've got these items. <clears throat> well, I'm on the road a lot, and uh, yeah. I like uh, food and alcohol. Mm -hmm. So I make sure I have some in case I have an unexpected overnight stay. I love how, how seriously Bill and Frank are studying the product. <laughs> <laughs> this, this has got a very curious marking on it. It's a circle and a pregnant woman and a line going across it. What's that got I, that suggests to me that they don't advise that pregnant women drink. <laughs> oh. It's hardly hieroglyphics, <laughs> Bill, is it? <laughs> See what, if I found this in a car, I'd assume it was the flight recorder. <laughs> <laughs> David, time to guess. I think it's nonsense. So we have to say yeah. it's nonsense. Yeah. You're all saying it's yeah. a lie. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, John, uh, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is true. Oh. <laughs> And uh, I should say, if you're thinking of compiling an emergency car kit of your own, both Would I Lie to You and the BBC, would like to point out that. Other brands are available. <laughs> <laughs> and that noise signals time is up and it's the end of the show and I can reveal that tonight's winners by a massive seven points to three, Lee's team. Of course, it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week is Sarah Millican. <laughs> yes, Sarah Millican. Sarah hasn't lied so much since her first day on Loose Women when she told her co-hosts, honestly, I can't smell gin. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>